Hello, my name is John Arnold and this is PhotoWalkthrough.com, Tutorial 7, Chapter 4. Well, for those of you that follow the show week by week, you'll know that I've had a couple of holidays recently, so it might not surprise you to hear that next week I'm away again. This time I'll be in Paris with my wife and we'll be attending the wedding of some good friends of ours, and as usual I'll try and launch the show on Monday but uh, while I'm there, but I just thought I'd let you know so that you're not surprised if I can't. And before we get started, I also wanted to mention the audience survey that I'm running at the moment. I've signed up with a company called PodTrack that helps me see how popular the show is, and as a part of that, I'd like to learn a little bit about you folks, the viewers. The survey only takes a couple of minutes, and it doesn't require you to give any information like your name or email address or anything else that would identify you. It just lets me compile a profile of the kind of people viewing the show, and that will be helpful if I find myself talking to sponsors or asking companies for competition prizes. So if you can spare a couple of minutes, I'd be very grateful if you visited www.photowalkthrough.com and clicked on the audience survey button and filled in the survey. Also, the response to my offer to send out postcards has been great. Thank you to everyone that sent me their postal address. I have posted cards to all of you so far, but I've still got more cards left, and I've even ordered 50 more. So if you'd like a postcard printed with the Western at Low Tide image from Tutorial 1, then email me your postal address to photowalkthrough at gmail.com, and I'll send you one. They're free, and I will post them to anywhere in the world. OK, let's get started on the photo editing for today. Um, here's the final image, and let's just go back to where we were up to last week. So I'll turn off those original edits and turn on the new edits. And you can see that so far we've done a little bit of spot editing. We've done a black and white conversion using the channel mixer. We did some work increasing the contrast. We've added a hard light layer just to tone down that sky and just to start bringing the corners in a little bit for that vignette effect that remember we're, we're trying to uh, reproduce a sort of a Holger style on this image. So um, the next step is now to start giving some form to the tree. I'm going to work on a soft light layer and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use uh, a new, uh, sorry not an adjustment layer, I'm going to use a new regular layer which is this button down here, the little sticky note with the bent up corner. So if I click that, it's going to make a new layer. If I double click on the name, and rename it to soft light and then I'm going to set the blending mode to soft light and now I'm going to grab my Akam pen and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to try and do now I'm after um, quite a high contrast look here and I mentioned last week that I would like the darker areas of the tree to actually lose detail completely and for the eye to be drawn by the light to the more detailed areas of the tree and also in the process of, of working on this soft light I'm going to uh, just try and even out the light a little bit more so that the, the eye is drawn more into the centre of the picture it's very gloomy at the bottom here and there isn't much detail on these roots that I'd like to bring out so I'm going to, going to work on that a little bit and also the sky is, is very uniformly grey at the moment so I'll just try and give it a little bit of glow in the, sky, in the sky there so with my soft light layer selected I'm going to grab my brush tool which you can get by pressing B or you can click on the icon there and remember the D key selects black and white as your foreground and background colors on your uh, color selector uh, I'm going to press X to get white as my foreground color so D selects black and white X switches the black and white it switches the foreground and background color um, it just alternates them and then with my brush I'm using the square bracket keys um, I've been mentioned mail about this many times on many of the European keyboards the square bracket keys are not bound to uh, make the brush larger and smaller because the square bracket keys are not uh, they're sort of shifted or something on European key keyboards um, but on mine they're just a regular key combination um, so I'm going to just make my brush about the size of this this detail here that I want to bring up I'm going to try and just lighten the bark here so I'm making my brush about the size of that edit and just lightly using the graphics tablet I'm just going to paint white onto my soft light layer there just to start bringing that up and if I turn the layer on and off you may not have seen the change go in but if I turn the layer on and off you can see that the the edit is there and this is typical of the way I do these dodge and burn layers is I just layer it in gently pressing on the on the graphics tablet and keep going over and over and over until I get the effect I want. If you try and press harder and get it right on the first stroke you're going to find that you go too far and you press too hard 
and it doesn't come out looking the way you want. Now, the light is clearly coming from the right in this shot. Um, there's a slightly unexplained shadow here on the top of this tree, other than the top of this branch. That is actually because there was a tree next to this to the right that was obscuring the light a little bit. Um, for the purposes of this shot, um, the viewer doesn't know that. There's no indication of it. There's no need for that really to be there. So I'm just going to just sort of fill in that little bit of extra detail because what I'm interested in is the detail on the branches here. I'm interested in that bark detail. So I'm just going to where there's bark detail here. I'm just going to paint in the white on the soft light layer. And also I find this this little twisty branch that sticks up here and breaks the shape of the tree up a little bit. I find that interesting. So this is not so much for detail now. I'm painting white on the on the lighter side of this branch, not for detail, just for emphasis. I'm, I'm, your eye is drawn to sharp contrast in the image, and so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm increasing the contrast of the image, but I'm also um, leading the eye just to just to uh, uh, take your eye to the, the elements of the shot that interested me. So I'm painting white along that edge there against this darker black area on the side of the tree trunk here makes a nice sharp contrast that your eye will be drawn to. And uh, another step in the next tutorial I'm going to cover sharpening this image. Uh, sharpening also of course increases the contrast along edges so that will greatly increase the um, uh, the attractiveness to the eye of these areas with the bark on them. I'm going to sharpen these up in the next image in the next tutorial. So also I mentioned that these roots down here need some light. So I'm just going to, with a little bit of white again, paint down the sides of the roots where the, remember the light's coming from the right hand side, so the light should be coming along the top of that root there and along the right hand side of that root there, and sort of along the right hand side front of these two here, and I'm just going to sort of blend that in a little bit, I've overcooked it a bit there, just going to blend that in up into the bottom of the tree just to try and because there's a, there's a wonderful twist to it if you look there's, there's there's roots going out that way and there's a sort of a twist that goes up through there and then often into that branch so if I can just draw that twist out and maybe lead the viewer to see the twist a little bit as well it's all about form this image is all about form all right I'm going to take the black now I've just pressed X to get black as my foreground color and in these areas where there's shadow I'm painting black onto my soft light layer and this is going to have a very large effect because it is quite a high contrast image and those areas are pretty dark already so as I said before I'm not frightened of losing detail in those shadow areas I don't mind what I'm after is high contrast I want drama and this is going to just really add to the sort of the spooky uh, not quite threatening but atmospheric dramatic style of the image so that's more black along the bottom of that branch there and I'm just going to try and blend the light um, it's all about form as I say and obviously these branches are quite rounded so I want uh, quite a light highlight on the four on the, the lit edge here and I want it to, to go gradually grey around as it goes just to try and really make the, the form of the branch stand out. So there's, there's more detail that can vanish a little bit there. Just painting that black in. Now there's an interesting little detail here just zooming in with my mouse scroll wheel and um, you see there's a little bit of a a reflection of light along the bottom of this branch here. I find that interesting. I'm just going to bring that up, painting white over it a little, just gently painting white over it in my soft light layer, just to bring that up. I'll try and blend it in a little bit. Let's grab the black again and just make sure that we're not making the shadows look too unrealistic. There is an element of, of art to this as well as photography. And uh, many of you will probably say that this is not real photography, but that's this is my style. This is what interests me. Okay. 
let's have a look at how we're doing. Right, we've got, um, if I'm going to turn this soft light layer on and off, uh, just clicking the, the little eye symbol next to the layer, let's just see how that's doing. I think the shapes of the tree are coming out quite nicely. Um, we've got maybe a little bit of a highlight here that is drawing the eye too much. So I'm going to grab black on my soft light layer again. I'm just going to lightly paint black over that area just to take it down brightness wise. Let's turn that off and on now. You see that's just taken that down just so that it's hopefully matching the sort of lightness levels of this area and this area so that hopefully it doesn't draw the viewer's eye too much because that isn't really where I want the viewer's eye to go. Now the other thing I wanted to do on this image is this foreground area is very shadowy. Again, as I said, there's a tree to the right that is actually blocking some of the light and as well as shad casting shadow up here, it's casting a shadow in the foreground down here. This shadow is from the main tree. This shadow here is from the tree, uh, the tree to the right that's out of shot. Now, I don't really want there to be any evidence of that tree to the right. I don't think it really needs to be there. It doesn't need to be mentioned in the shot. So I'm just painting gently again white in that foreground just to bring up the light levels on the foreground. But I don't want to destroy those corner vignettes that we've been putting in in the hard light layer. So I'm just trying to layer in some white and hopefully leave the corners just going slightly to dark because that's that is part of that Holger style. I'm just blending in the lighter area there and I want to keep this shadow here which has gone a little bit grey so I'm just going to paint a bit of black over it on the soft light layer more towards the tree because obviously the shadows are stronger towards the tree and they will lighten as they go away from the tree so let's just turn that soft light layer on and off and see how we've done see that quite significantly lightens up the foreground and that, that lighter foreground now starts to balance the lighter on the tree and the light in the sky. I'm going to put a little bit more light in the sky yet, but this lighter foreground really is needed just to keep the interest all the way from top to bottom in this image. If you remember where the image started, let me just open this layers palette up a little bit. Um, remember you can alt click on the eyeball next to the background layer and that will take you back to the original, the original image. Where this image started there is an awful lot more light in the sky and there is detail in the foreground here and in the process of let me just turn off all these layers in the, the spot edit doesn't matter the black and white started to really that's where we started to find that the sky was too bright and we needed work and when we added the contrast that is the point at which this foreground all went murky grey now in the hard light we sorted out the sky but we've never addressed this murky grey foreground yet so that's what we're doing in the soft light layer as well as drawing the eye around the picture to the parts of the picture that we want so just from a balance point of view we've got detail here in the sort of the centre right of the image we've got some detail here on the lower right of the image we've got some detail here at the lower middle and I think we needed just something around it just to balance up the light that's going to go in the sky and the light that's on the side of this branch here. Now, the main feature of this image that drew my eye when I first took the picture, when I was stood there in that woodland with the, with the camera, was this big branch that sort of came across the front of the shot and out of shot to the right. And it was the detail on that branch that drew my eye. So that's where I'm going to put my main emphasis. That's where I'm going to put the light here. So... I just looked at it there and I found that it was going dark too soon. I want I want it to go dark just as it goes out of shot up here. So I want loads of light all the way along here up to up to about here where I want it fading out. So I'm just again painting white on my soft light layer just to bring out that detail that I want all the way up the branch so that it sort of leads your eye up into the corner and then the darkness sort of takes over. I don't want to lead your eye completely out of shot. I just want I just want there to be lots of interest and lots of detail within the shot. I want your eye to be able to look all around the picture and find things of interest everywhere you look. So I'm just concentrating again on the form of the tree. Just trying to make sure that these branches look nicely uh, rounded. And I've just been painting with white when I wanted to be painting with black. So, black on the left because the light's coming from the right. 
Just painting a little bit of black down the middle just to try and blend the light portion into the dark portion. And I'll just grab white on a slightly smaller brush just to bring out that highlight so that we've got dark, grey, light, and hopefully there's a bit of form to the tree. Despite the fact that we've lost sh shadow detail, I still think your eye fills in the form. Your eye can see the, the 3D shape of the tree. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm just creeping around the image a little bit, just following the lines that my eye would follow, just to make sure that, that the light around those lines is even and that the detail is there where I want it. Had to paint in fairly hard up there just to get that up to a, an acceptable sort of brightness. I think this lighter area is going a little bit too close to the top of the frame there. I don't want your eye let out, so I've just darkened that down a little bit. It's also going to darken that down a little bit because I don't want that going draw your eye out. And then the final step on this soft light layer, this, this tutorial by the way is almost entirely going to concentrate on the soft light layer. I apologise for that, but this is where the, the art in this image really comes from. Um, I'm now going to just lighten the sky a little bit and just try and reproduce that interesting bright spot that you get in the middle of so many of those wonderful Holger images where that meniscus lens generates a very uneven sort of light and it, it quite often you can see the edges of the image circle on the frame as it casts the light onto the film but you certainly causes quite a bright spot, a bit like a defocused uh, projector. A badly focused projector bulb will cast a, quite a, a noticeable lighter region in the center of the, the picture. I used to be a cinema projectionist when I was at university and it was one of the things we looked for was a, a, a badly focused projector bulb. So Let's just see how that change is now working out. I think you'll agree that's added an awful lot of drama. And um, there is just a little bit more light in the middle there. I can probably go a tiny bit further. I don't want to completely wash out the, the detail in those background trees, but it's not really the main point of the image. So where there's a strong contrast in the background, I'm not really afraid of just reducing the contrast a little bit. I, I want the contrast on the foreground objects, not the, not on the background objects. Typically on a landscape shot I would want good contrast, good detail throughout, but this is more of a subject shot. This is all about this one tree and I want the interest to be on my subject and the background merely to be a support, not, not a focus of attention. So I'm just looking where there's detail in the background and where there's contrast in the background rather and just painting white on that soft light layer just to grey it up a little bit there I think that's getting there pretty well and I'm just looking at this branch here which leads up and there's a nice form on the on the on the branch there but I don't think it quite matches up with that up there so I think we've got too much black on the left side, left side of that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the, white, the, the brush with white again as my foreground, and I'm just going to paint down the middle just to try and take the light a little more to the left. Layering it in, small strokes, gentle strokes, just keep keep going again and again and again until it looks right. There we go. And I think that's pretty good. Now. Uh, the next step here, uh, it, it's hard to see when you've got your when you've been looking at it. So you get tunnel vision. Um, it doesn't, at the moment, look too grey. But if I was to add a levels adjustment layer, so this is my adjustment layer button. I'm going to choose levels. Let's have a look at the levels diagram. You can see 
what this shows, this is a histogram, and if you've not seen a histogram before, what you're seeing is a representation of how many dark tones, the dark tones are towards the left, and how many light tones uh, there are in the image, and obviously it goes grey through the middle, so dark, getting lighter, 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 up to 50% grey, lighter, 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 all the way up to pure white. So in this image, it's all very dark, um, and there's, there's this big chunk here at the, the right-hand end of the image, that's got no light tones at all. So the lightest tone in this image is, is probably about 75% brightness, which is which is not really what we want. So uh, normally I would use curves for this kind of thing, but in this case the Levels dialog is going to do a really good job of this. So what I'm going to do, we've got some sliders here. This slider at the bottom says, I don't want, I want, you can drag that up and say, I want everything below this brightness to go to pure black, or you can drag down the white slider at the right hand end, and drag that down and say everything to the uh, everything to the right of this I want to go to pure white. So if I dragged it to there, I don't want to drag it quite that far, but if I dragged it to there, I'm saying throw away all the values that are brighter than 75% and rejig all of the other values in the image so that the distribution of tones is from black to here to complete white here. And as you as you see, when I drag that slider to the right and left, We've got a midpoint slider as well that sets where you want the midtones to be. So if I drag that white slider down to, let's drag it down to there, you can see the midtone slide, the midtone point is moving with the with the white slider. It's staying about 50% between the two. You can also click and drag the midtone slider and say, right, well, okay, I've I've said where I want my whites to be. I've said where I want my blacks to be with the black point slider. I can also set where I want the midtone to be, and it will use that as its midpoint when it's rejigging all the all the brightness values in the image. So let's just set that somewhere I like it. I want reasonably high contrast. I'm not afraid of dark images. You'll see that from the postcards. If you've asked for a postcard print from me, by the way, um, those postcards that I'm posting out, uh, they look pretty good, but they, they're printed a little bit darker than I would have liked. Um, but that's okay. Um, a lot of my work does come out quite dark, and I'm, I, I quite like it that way. It looks moody. So. I've dragged my white point down, which means that all those areas, all those tones that I wasn't using, I'm clipping them off, and I'm saying, right, I want, I want the brightest tone in my image to be. That's probably about 90, 95 percent there. And I'm, I've dra dragged my my mid tone to the right, which is going to generally darken things a little bit. And in this case, it's actually increasing my contrast as well. So I'm going to press OK on that. And let me just turn that layer on and off, and you'll see what it's, what it's done for the image. That's how the image looked when we just finished doing the soft light layer. And I think at the time, you might have thought it looked probably OK, the light tones were looking all right. But if I turn that layer on, you can see that suddenly the light tones have brightened up an awful lot. And if I've got this right, the dark tones have stayed quite dark, which I think they have. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to call it call it a day there. Uh, sorry, this is a slightly short show today. There's uh, only one more chapter in this tutorial, and if I'd covered any more today, I wouldn't have had any mo uh, enough material for next week's show. So, um, uh, next week's tutorial will come out hopefully next Monday, uh, or as close to it as I can manage with me being away. I do expect to have internet access while I'm there, but I don't know how often I'll be uh, I'll, I'll be around in the apartment to use it. Um, uh, one other thing, I feel bad about mentioning it, but if any of you really wanted to support the show, um, I'd love it if you'd consider visiting www.podcastawards.com. They've just opened nominations for this year's 2006 Podcast Awards, and you can nominate all your favourite shows there. Uh, it would be great to get a mention. Okay, uh, thank you for listening this week. I will catch you all next time. <laughs>